Hey, all you rock stars from Washington, D.C. This is the Rock on the Money podcast, episode 170. It's time to talk about saving, investing, protecting all those hard-earned monies. We're here to coach you along that path to retirement and financial independence. I'm Craig, your certified master financial coach, along with Amanda. She is a corporate in-house lawyer and real estate referral agent. And we're grateful you joined us. Check us out at Facebook at facebook.com slash rock on the money or the website at rock on the money.com. Craig. Hello. How are you? Good. Good. Anything Craig. going on? Um, <clears throat> well, it's time that time of year to make your estimated quarterly tax payment. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> keep, keep, <laughs> between that and the prices oh. of everything. So that's a bummer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yay. Um, yeah, what else? Oh, did I tell you I got a walking treadmill for under my desk? That's so awesome. Yeah. I could probably use that, but I can't I can't stream on Facebook gaming while I'm treadmilling. Because I'm driving just, I'm driving a truck. Bouncing. What's that? You know what? Your head would be bouncing like it would in a real truck as you're driving. <laughs> I already do that now. I fake that the truck is bouncy. Yeah. What do they call your butt muscles? Glutes? Glutes, yeah. Well, they're rock hard, man. Oh boy. Playing, yeah. Hey, we got, we got four questions. Welcome to right. Rock on the Money. Welcome to Rock on the, the Money. Hey, the gamers are listening to this now, so hey, whatever it takes, right? Hey, uh, we got four great questions. Can you read the first one? Yeah. So the first one says, I have whittled down my debt to $8,384.90. That That's on the money specific. right there. <laughs> Uh, I love it. I live in a small town without any real availability for side hustles outside of work from home. Er, wrong answer. Yeah, exactly. I used to DoorDash before I moved, but that isn't available where I'm at now. Is there any work from home that I can do? Yeah, okay. So DoorDash is just one of a gazillion options for side hustles. Literally a gazillion. <laughs> Literally. Like, is gazillion bigger than billion? I can ask my Google what a gazillion is. <laughs> I keep a Google thing right here. Like how big is a gazillion? <laughs> Cause that's your favorite number. I know. I love that number, but, but I mean, come on. There's so many things you can do. Yeah. And by I, the way, I'm noticing on Facebook cause I go to these financial groups that are all outside of ours. Everybody's looking for a way to make more money. Cause those vehicles cost a lot of money to fuel them. So people yeah. are looking for a side. Suddenly everybody wants the a side hustle. People that were making bank during the pandemic, right. delivering things when gas was super cheap because demand was low, uh, are suddenly thinking, hey, my profit margin isn't what it used to be because now I'm spending so much money on gas. And here's the other statistic. I don't know how, this is just a post I read. It's on Facebook. It's got to be real. But it makes sense. So <laughs> uh, someone claimed that they have friends that work at Amazon, those warehouses. Yeah. And they would normally do like, I think it was 75,000 packages a day or something like crazy like that. It's uh -huh. down like to, down to 50. Oh. It's really dropped dramatically and they're literally standing around doing nothing. Well, because people uh, aren't. People don't have the money. Spending all day on Amazon. Yeah. So shopping. apparently managers are going around asking for voluntary vacations and basically, you know, sending you home. So. I know there are layoffs going off now. And, oh, man. Uh, so anyway, so everyone's looking for another way to make money. So. All right. So that doesn't answer ahead. the question of what no, else doesn't. could they no. do. It's just showing how bad things are, you know. Everybody yeah. wants a side hustle. Thing. Yeah. So I, it's always going to depend on your qualifications and your interests. Those are the two drivers for what you can do. So, for example, I have a side hustle of teaching online courses, but it's because of my qualifications are such that I am qualified to teach online courses at a university. Um, depending on your qualifications, you might be qualified to teach, you know, crafts or knitting or something, you know, there's Udemy out there or other courses. Um, you can find all sorts of online things to make, um, make make money we did a whole episode on e selling things on ebay for example craig what are your thoughts absolutely you got ebay you got etsy you may have craft abilities it's amazing what people make money doing nowadays so everybody has the internet right yeah the internet even in small towns right the internet is the great equalizer everybody has the same playing field it's just what are you going to do with it you have a phone you can do so much stuff. I've been watching these videos on YouTube 
that this is still a big deal is that um, retail arbitrage. Yes. Um, going to Walmart and there, and there are s- several websites. You know what? On another episode, I'm going to have to go over this because there's some other websites where you can check the stock of these items so you don't waste your time driving around. Yeah. But finding those clearance items and taking this these apps, scan it, see what you can sell it for, flip it for. Yeah. These guys make six figures easy. Yes, there's a lot. There's work involved. There's, a lot of work, yeah. there's work, but at least you know what your profit's going to be. Yep. The, the general process of this, I don't want to dwell on because we can do it later, but basically you take these apps, you find out if these items are, are clearance, you go to the actual store, scan everything in the store, go to TJ Maxx, whatever, just scan everything. You can see what you can flip it on Amazon. You can box all the stuff into Amazon, send off, and then they sell it for you. They take a percentage, you get the rest done. Now it takes work, but it, people are making money doing that. So yeah. that's just one thing. Yes, you're in a small town, but I'm sure you got a Walmart sitting there. And the odds of you finding these items at that Walmart's probably better because you're in a small town. Right. Anyway, I mean, you have that. I do video gaming. And that still takes skills. A lot of people, <laughs> I know it sounds stupid. I'm laughing because uh, it, your side hustle has turned into your main obsession. But yes. But it, it, it does well. It does really well. It's shocking. But it does take skills. A lot of people laugh at it. It is funny, but yeah. uh, you know, it does take a lot of work. It does. And if you take the hours I put into it and divide it into the money, it actually is not as much, but I enjoy it. It's creating. Yeah. Um, and that's the, that's the other part. So it, the interest, so qualifications right. and interest think, so start brainstorming about what are you qualified to do and what are you interested in doing? And then you'll come up with a list. Right. If you have, especially you're an expert in, I don't know, sewing, you'd be surprised how much you can make (laughs) sewing. You'd be surprised how much you can make by making videos about that. If you're an expert in on YouTube, you can become a creator on there and then you get paid on the ads. And the more of an expert you are, the more you'll, you'll make, uh, make money at because people will come to you. And then finally, uh, what's wrong with the traditional second job, right? Like there are so many places that are hiring right now. Oh, it's you know, crazy. Part-time workers, uh, shift workers, things like that. So there's nothing wrong with taking a traditional second job. I know we've, we've become so accustomed to everyone needs a side hustle, you know, but right. <laughs> people have been doing second jobs for since the beginning of time. <laughs> It is easier just to do the second job. And sometimes that involves sucking up your pride because yeah. you are you might be afraid that someone will see you at the grocery store working that job. There's nothing wrong with working at a grocery store or any of these places retail. Yeah. I've done it before. And they are all looking for people right now. Oh, and they'll give you a bonus of 5,000. That 5,000 bonus, shoot, that's, you got 8,300 there. Shoot, most of it. Now you got probably work there for six months for that. But still. You know, just go work your other job. You're work, trying to get out of debt. You know, you do what you can. You'd be surprised how quick you can knock that out. A three hours right. not a lot when you have a second job. Question two. Go ahead. So my wife and I are on the verge of baby step four, but haven't nice. taken the time to invest. I understand that new vehicles depreciate quickly the first four to five years, but if I'm able to buy a new car with cash, are there any concerns? I also have noticed that it's comparable pricing for a 2022 and a vehicle from 2015 to 2017 with more miles than a new car. Thoughts, please. They're actually, so Craig, before we dive in here, do you want to yeah. share what baby step four is? Baby step four is starting to invest 15% of your pay or your household income. So if both of you are working, both of you are doing 15% into retirement in conjunction with baby step five and six. Five is saving for your kids' college, which we're kind of eh, on. And then number six is paying off your house. So you do all that in conjunction. Well, what um, it means is you finish steps one, two, and three. Step one is you know saving a $1,000 emergency fund, a baby emergency fund, if correct. you will. Uh, paying off all your debt is baby step two, all of your debt except for your mortgage. And then baby step three is having your three to six month of expenses in an emergency fund. So they've done all of those steps. They're in good shape, you know, no debt, paid off uh, all debt and sitting with an emergency fund, a fully funded emergency fund. There you go. So it's time to invest, but they're looking for a new car or a new to them car. My, my first question is why? Are we looking at a new car before we even get into 
actually doing the purchase. Like they didn't say why. Yeah. Like what's, where's, where's the other car at? I wish I had known that. Like, is it like last episode last week where someone has to repair something at $7,000? Yeah. Or did you total your car or something like that where you have to get this? Do you right. want to get it or do you have to get it? And your yeah. have to get it may be different than my definition. So here's something I've noticed is new cars last year and this year may be missing some of the features you had gotten used to because of supply chain issues the last right. couple of years. Yeah. So that may be a factor in why you're seeing the comparable pricing for a new car now versus an older car from a few years ago. Mm. I would be really cautious about buying a new car right now. Well, always, but especially now because of right. these supply chain issues, are they swapping out generic parts versus, you know, genuine parts? Um, I'll give you an example. I just, a couple months ago, I got a brand new bicycle and I've been riding it and noticing there's like a knocking sound in one of the gears. And I took it in. They're like, oh, you know, we tuned it up. It's, it's good to go. And I'm like, no, I'm still hearing that. So I joined this Facebook group for this type of bicycle. Yeah, I know. Nerdy. Uh, <laughs> I love other it. People, other people explained that they were having that problem and it was because the gear um, package that's on it, because of supply chain issues, they'd been putting generic ones in there and not the brand name one. Oh. So they went and had it replaced with the brand name one under warranty and now it's completely fine. So wow. that's just one example. And it's a bicycle, not a car, but the same concept applies that because of supply chain issues, the genuine parts may not be what's in your car. Remember on the podcast I talked about a couple months ago, Mr. Wonderful and his uh, Ford pickup truck. Yeah. He took delivery of a fully loaded F-150, I don't know, a Raptor, I don't know what it was, but you know, he can spend all kinds of money. Yeah. He got delivered and he had his mechanic friend look over it. They were like Googling it over this thing. His mechanic friend says, you have a bunch of chips missing. Yeah. And he was never told this. Right. So it was, it was, you know, they were just not there. So he went on CNBC because he works with them and he went and blasted Ford for this. And yeah. the CEO made sure a new one was delivered that had everything on it. But the, the point is, you don't know if you're getting what you're paying for, like you said. And it's yeah. happening to even Mr. Wonderful. Yeah, so that reminds so, me, I have to take my bike in today. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but anyway, um, I, I totally agree with you on this. And the prices are similar. I'd rather buy a used one that has I everything than a new one. Yeah. I, I would always rather, I mean, I always prefer buying a new, uh, sorry, a used one right. because of the depreciation. Right now, I think even used ones are overpriced in this market. If you can even hold off another six months. Right. My personal opinion, now I have... You know, again, I don't have a crystal ball, but my personal opinion is that prices will stabilize and come down on the vehicles in the next six months as everything else starts to shake out. I agree. Yeah. And again, we wish we knew the condition of your current vehicles because I'm sure you have one. Like, why are we even doing this? Because I'd wait till next year if you can. But if you can't, then, you know, do yeah, what you, you think is best for you without... Uh, it sounds like you're able to pay cash, so make the most cost-effective purchase with your cash without taking out a loan. There you go. All right, let's take a quick break, and we'll be back with two great questions. You're listening to Rock on Money. there rock stars amanda here with choice realty connect.com are you about to sell your home or excited to buy your first or next home i'll be honored to help you find an expert to work with you in your local area at choice realty connect.com i'll help match you with up to three qualified licensed agents that specialize in your specific market Choice Realty Connect serves every zip code in all 50 states with a network of 15,000 top rated agents that are ranked within the top 5% for sales. Whether you're selling or looking for a condo, new construction, retreat, vacation property, or you're a first time home buyer, let me connect you with the perfect top agent today. ChoiceRealtyConnect.com. The choice is yours. Amanda Braun is a Florida licensed real estate with a brokerage Realty Connect. Rockland, USA.
Welcome back to Rock on the Money with Amanda and Craig. Check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash rock on the money and the website, rockonthemoney.com. Question number three. Is it normal to be afraid to use your savings account to pay off debt? If so, how do you overcome this? Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. 100% yes. Yes. I, talk to, I, I talk about how savings, saving money and holding on to your money can be very emotional, right? Yes. It's a score. <laughs> it's a right? score. It's your personal scorecard. And it's yeah. a safety blanket. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, because you put money in a savings account for a rainy day, right? And so to think, well, if I reduce the balance of my savings account, what if the rainy day is a thunderstorm? Right. <laughs> you know, it's a little scary. Uh, but you're, what you're not factoring in is your debt is already reducing the amount of your savings account. It's just doing it in a, you know, over on the other side of the balance sheet, basically. So you got to pay off that debt. And don't forget the interest you're paying on that debt compounded with the amount of buying power of that cash sitting in a savings account that's not making any money. Yeah. That's actually artificially compounding how much you're really losing. Right. So because you need to make that money are work. You're not making money. Right. You're not making money in savings. It's not supposed to. So you're actually compounding how much money you're losing. You just don't actually see it. But in the grand scheme, you're losing even more by keeping in savings, not getting rid of that debt. You yeah, got to get rid of that debt. Pay off the debt and then build up your savings again. Because those credit cards are going up. Like what? Last last week, they were going to get a car loan for 7 When do you remember ever getting a new car loan for 7%? Uh, yeah, it's insane. 0%. <laughs> yeah, it's getting crazy. Yeah, you don't see no zeros around anymore, do you? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't looked. I'm yeah, I don't look. I'm not, in my 2015 car. <laughs> I got my 2013 Civic. I'm still rocking. That doesn't do anything, so. <laughs> yeah. Hey, question yeah. number four. All right, what assets does everyone use to consider themselves millionaires? There you oh, go, let you question. do it, go for it. Yeah, so the way you determine your net worth, which is how you determine if you're a millionaire, is you take all of your assets, add them up, and subtract all of your liabilities. So I generally, so technically, your assets is everything that you own, like your car, your your house, everything in your house, your bank accounts, um, your stock portfolio, retirement accounts, all of that. Technically, those are all of your assets. Now, personally, I only add up, um, you know, bank accounts, retirement accounts, and property values, including my primary residence, but all property values. I don't go to the extent of uh, adding in the value of vehicles or household goods and things like that. One, it's it's just very tedious. Yeah. <laughs> and for me, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, estimation is good enough. And two, you know, if I count in my vehicles as assets, sure, that's true. But I kind of need a vehicle, so I'd have to replace it. It's not like right. I can just sell it and use the money and then not have a vehicle, right? So that's what I do is all of my properties are assets. All the So the net worth, which means you have to, if you have a mortgage on a property, you have to subtract what you owe from the value of the property. And that gives you the what your equity is in the house. Mm -hmm. And then once you add up all of your assets, then you subtract from that any debt that you have, any liability. So if you have credit card debt, which hopefully our listeners have moved on from that and don't have any, or if you have a mortgage, you subtract that. Um, student loans, you would subtract all of that. Anything that you owe anyone. If you owe grandma $500, you subtract that. And then you determine, am I a millionaire? There you go. do all the math. Simple math. Yeah. I, use a, I use a spreadsheet. It calculates it every month. There you go. It, it fluctuates too, based on the value of your retirement account, right? <laughs> right? And based on the value of properties. As we said right now, a lot it's, of people that probably were millionaires are not now because yeah, the value has gone down. A, it's not a linear road. <laughs> no, it's not. It goes up and down. It goes up and down, back and forth. So you might be a millionaire one month. You might be a 900000 or the the next month. You might be a $2 million millionaire, you know, six months from now. And then it just, it fluctuates based on values. Right. And all that matters is when you get older and you're thinking about retiring, 
that's when you figure out, am I able to retire? It's not an age, it's an amount. And you determine the amount you need. And the only time it stops fluctuating is when you cash out. Right. So by cashing out, you'd have to sell your house or your, or your properties. You have to sell all of your stocks and have it all just sitting as liquid money. That is the only time your value stops fluctuating. Right. It will fluctuate till you die. Just the way it is. And we will have upturns and downturns in the market. Right now is one of those downturns. I've seen so many of these. I'm like, I'm not even freaking out. It is what it is. I just know it's going to go up. I'm just trying to figure out how can I invest more right now? So. That was a good answer. You love that. You love that question. <laughs> you love yeah, that. I do. Because you're on that sucker every month. Yeah. Got to know your numbers, right? Yeah. But I, but I would not look at you for a 1K right now. <laughs> no. All right. Well, thank you very much, Amanda. All right. All right. You can find Amanda on Instagram and Twitter at Agile Amanda. And you can find me on all of your favorite social media platforms at Rockland USA. Don't forget to check out the website and subscribe to the podcast. All the links are right there on the front page, rockonthemoney.com. Please subscribe and leave comments to our podcast on Apple, Google, Spotify, or even your favorite app that you got right there on your phone. Those help us out a lot. If you're ever looking for a specific topic or content that we've produced over time, just go to the website and in the search bar, just type in your topic, be it 401k, stimulus check, or anything, and everything comes right up for you. We have so much gratitude that you've taken the time out of your day to listen to our podcast while you're walking, driving, traveling, or whatever you're doing. Please send us an email. Let us know how you're doing out there. Podcast at rocklandusa.com. So long, everybody. Thank you very much again. We'll see you again next time. All opinions expressed by the host are solely their own and do not reflect the views of any company, affiliates, or advertisers. Investments or strategies mentioned in the show may not be suitable for you. Before acting on any information in the show, you should consider whether it is suitable for your particular circumstances and strongly consider seeking advice from your own financial or investment advisor.